good boy, Mac. Uh-oh. Why isn't gasoline rationing wonderful? Not a car on the street. Now maybe they'll give me back my driver's license. Hurry up, Mac. Hurry up. June is always so glad to see me and help me with my charity drives. But then everyone is so generous, they either contribute or tell me where to go. For a donation, that is. Mrs. Rowland! Well, don't stand there. Run! Warn her! Wake up! Wake up! What is it? Fru Roland come her up new. Get me dressed. Yeah, maybe I can get out the back way. Good morning, Phil. Good morning, Mrs. Roland, Miss Martin. I'm very sorry, but Mr. Laney is... My, uh... I've always adored this room. But I'd give anything to rearrange the furniture. I'd love to see it done in off here. Oh, what a lovely nighty today, today, chic. What there is of it. Well, aren't you going to ask us in? Sure, won't you lie down? Oh, we haven't time to stay. This is only a social call, but I have a wonderful idea. As long as we're here, we can take your donation. Come in. We're collecting for... Good morning, Miss June. Oh, Recky. Oh, how I adore those itty-bitty pig sausages. They're so fattening. Darling, do give as much as you possibly can. A new cause has arisen. I can see it's going to have the same old effect. Will there be anything else, Miss June? No, that's all, Fields. You don't need to give me the money today. Just sign the pledge and send a check at your own convenience. There's no hurry as long as I receive it by tomorrow. Oh, 10.30. Come along, Helen. Time is flying. Let it fly. This is where I bail out. All right, darling, you stay with June. Remember, I expect you both at my party next week. And don't forget to bring your clothes. <laughs> Bundles for blue jackets. Angel, isn't it dreadfully early for you to be up? I have to get up early in the morning to keep up with you, dear. The Count of Futrell took me to Kay's party last night, remember? But when I was ready to leave, he was gone. So were you. Oh, darling, you don't think for a moment. How could you do such a thing to your oldest friend? Oh, you mustn't be self-conscious about your age. You're not old. You've just been through a lot. After all, two trips to Reno. Good morning, Mr. Barrett. Morning. Morning. <clears throat> Announce me immediately, Fields. Yes, sir, certainly. It's urgent. Yes, sir. Uh, pardon me. Oh, Helen. Tell me, how does she feel? I mean, can she stand a shock? Why, what's happened? Nothing serious. I'm afraid. Charles, you must tell me. I'm her best friend. I ought to share a bit. There's nothing left to share. I can't keep it from her any longer. Helen, she's broke. She's wiped out? Every cent? The poor, poor darling. I just don't know how to tell her. It isn't your duty, Charles. It's mine. Yes, perhaps a woman could do it better. Of course. That's what women live for. Moments like this. Darling, it breaks my heart to be the one to have to tell you. Tell me what? June, dear, you must be brave. After all, a lot of people are poor. Poor? Charles just told me. You've lost everything. You're penniless. Charles, it isn't true. It can't be. Is it? Oh, well, how did it happen? Well, most of your father's money was invested in England. When the war broke out, they impounded all foreign securities. I didn't mention about it at the time because I thought it was only temporary. But I had money in this country, too. Yes, you had enough to get along on during a short war. But unfortunately, this is a long war, and now you're short. <laughs> There's your bank statement. You're overdrawn. But that's silly. I've got to have money. I can't ask the servants to work for nothing. This is a democracy. How am I going to live? Well, <laughs> you could marry me. Oh, Charles, things can't be that bad. 
I mean, you're, you're very sweet, but I, I must have something left. You still have your youth, pet, and that smart figure. I know. I'll sell the ranch in New Mexico. Charles, can't you interest somebody? Well, as a matter of fact, the government's very much interested for back taxes. Oh. But I phoned Hank Morgenthau immediately. I pointed out that your father had passed away. I... And they want to do something about it? Yes, they're adding inheritance taxes. Oh, Charles, isn't there anything you can do? Well, I'll have to think about it for a couple of days. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll drop by again on Tuesday. We'll see what can be done. Mind you, I don't want to commit myself to a prediction, but I think I can safely say that <laughs> things look bad. Yes? I'm Pedro Sullivan. Oh, yes. Mr. Cadabra's expecting you. Won't you come in? Mr. Sullivan is here. Bienvenido. Dame de gusto, Senor Cordoba. Pedro Sullivan. It's good to see you again. Will you please put this in my personal file? And how did you leave your dear father? Speaking of you, senor. Great man, great man, your father. One need only look at his face once to see his character, strength, intelligence. My boy, you are the perfect image of your mother. Sit down. History reverses itself. 30 years ago, your father arrived in Venezuela, a stranger. Married the most beautiful girl in the country and founded our rubber company. And now I arrive in my own country, a stranger, to save that company. Oh, I see you are acquainted with your mission here. The same as my mother's ancestors, to get gold from the natives. Yes, but uh, unfortunately, the natives of Wall Street have changed. They don't have the same passion for glass beads. We must convince them our plantations can produce rubber faster than they can develop a substitute from this uh, guayule plant of theirs. The public is demanding action. People will soon be without everything, from tires to, to girdles. It'll change the shape of everything. I would handle the negotiations for this loan myself, but your father is my dearest friend, and I know the great hopes he has held for you, hopes which so far have not been fulfilled. That's why I'm taking this chance, and believe me, it is a chance, because if you fail... I won't fail you, senor. And I appreciate this opportunity to rehabilitate myself in his eyes. You have my word for it. My playboy days are over. Don't worry about it, senor. I'll get the loan. There is no substitute for pure rubber. Why, anybody can tell you that, that Guayuli rubber doesn't have the tensile strength and, and durability, and, and suppose it does. They couldn't produce enough to satisfy oh, the... Don't sell me. Sell the bankers. I'll do everything I can to help you. Now you should take an apartment, entertain... in moderation. We are interested in rubber, not oats. a month for this place. Why, the dirt's thick enough in here to grow things. Oh, maybe I can rent it to a truck gardener. June, why don't you marry Charles? Oh, trying to get rid of competition, dear. Competition? I have the field of myself. Oh, don't forget, Cinderella was a dark horse, too. You won't find it so easy to set your dust cap for a man. Are you insinuating the only reason I'm attractive to men is because of my clothes and my bank account? Of course not, darling. But they do help. Listen, you. Evening gown or kitchen apron and ankle bandage. You pick the man and I'll take him away from you. Doorbell. Well, for what? Oh, that's me. Oh, take me to the bedroom, will you? This apartment is for rent. Oh, yes. Won't you come in? Thank you. The real estate agent asked my advertisement for an apartment. I presume this is yours. 
No, Miss Delaney. Miss <laughs> um, Delaney isn't here just now. She's leaving town. But I'll be glad to show it to you. Thank you. June, take the gentleman's hat. And you may go on with your work. And please try to be more tidy. We want to impress our new tenant, don't we? Yes, madam. May I introduce myself? My name is Pedro Sullivan. Uh, only half of me is South American. <laughs> How nice. I can't resist anything that's 50% off. Helen Martin. It's an ideal apartment if you and your uh, wife do much entertaining. No, I'm not married. Oh. How long do you plan to stay in New York? Not very long, I'm afraid. I'm here in a business deal and it has to be put over in a hurry. We all have to work fast these days, don't we? I see where I'll spend a lot of time here. If I have to rearrange the apartment to suit a bachelor. You make it sound very attractive. I couldn't have Mr. Laney down. I know she'd expect me to do everything in my power to hold on to a tenant. Come, I'll show you the rest of the apartment. Oh, I'm afraid you haven't time, madam. She just phoned. Who? Mr. Laney. She's waiting at the station to say goodbye. And she's getting very impatient. Please, you mustn't let me keep you. I'll be happy to show you the apartment, sir. Thank you. Good day. Right this way, sir. Madam's bedroom, isn't it lovely? The bed has a triple mattress. You'll never find another like it. Isn't it inviting? So warm, so soft and enticing. Oh, um, the bed is over there. Oh, uh, yes, it's beautiful. Uh, your dog. Oh, uh, Miss Delaney's. Mac, I'm surprised that you get down at once. Madam's bathroom. It's considered quite a show place. Really? By decorators. And this is the hot air dryer. It's wonderful in the morning, blows the sleep right out of you. Just a flick of the switch and you make your own weather. Let go now. We're asking for 600 a month. And you don't even have a gun on your hand? All right, I think we'll be very happy here. Thank you, sir. The real estate agent will arrange the lease. Uh, who's we? Well, naturally, I assume that you'd stay on here with me. Oh, that's impossible. What do you mean, naturally? Well, there are a great many valuable things here in the apartment. I should think you'd want to look out for Mr. Laney. I certainly do. If you'll excuse me, sir, I'll pack my clothes. But uh, it'll save me the trouble of finding another servant. And I'll pay well. Uh, I've never worked for a man. My wants are very simple. I have only one bad habit. I better pack. What is it? I lose my temper if I don't get my morning coffee promptly at eight.
time to get up. Where, on the West Coast? I asked you to call me promptly at 8, Tuesday. I have an appointment at the Flint Rubber Company at 11.15. Oh, Mr. Sullivan, everyone thinks it's wonderful of you to come up here and solve the rubber problem for us. Oh. Oh, that's nothing. It's nothing at all. How soon can you begin sending us rubber? Immediately. Uh, that isn't two years. How much can you produce? Well, we're expanding up. What's that got to do with letting me oversleep? Will there be anything else, sir? Yes, some bicarbonate of soda. I'm sorry, it's, uh, it's a good breakfast. Very good breakfast. Toast looks delicious. A bit well done, perhaps. Well, I thought I'd let you scrape it the way you like it. Was it too strong? I thought it would give you a lift. Yeah, it did. I'll be right down. How long did you say you've been with Miss Delaney? Oh, as long as I can remember. We've been inseparable. I would have gone with her, but she wanted to get away from it all. I know just how she felt. Oh, the doorbell. Excuse me, sir. Hello, June. Well, I think I figured a way to help you out. First, I'll put you in bankruptcy. Then I'll... June, you haven't. You aren't. Charles, you can't come in. I'm not supposed to have visitors. You haven't hired yourself out as a lady's maid. Of course not, Charles. Don't get so excited. I couldn't bear the thought of you serving breakfast in bed to any woman. Well, then you have nothing to worry about. Now run along. I've got to get back to him. Did you say him? Come back Thursday. I'm receiving in the kitchen. June's rented her apartment to a man. I know. Charming, isn't he? But she's in there now serving him breakfast, in bed. So she stayed on as maid, the little fool. I knew sooner or later she'd over a bit of hand. Well, he'll not take advantage of a helpless woman while I'm around. I'll get him out of there. Now, now, there's no point in getting belligerent. No, I'm going back Besides, in. Besides, he has a frightful temper. And speak with June. What will people say? A strange man in her apartment. They need no. know. If I were you, Charles, I'd let sleeping dogs lie. Yes, but he doesn't sleep all the time. Use your head. If June's in that kitchen, she's out of circulation. That's right. He wouldn't make advances in the kitchen. Not if there's a strong counteroffensive in the drawing room. Bye-bye, Charles. It's time to start maneuvers. Of course, after all, she's his maid. That man would make love to his maid. <laughs> or would he? Oh, come back later, Helen. I can't talk to you now. If I were calling on the servants, I'd come on Thursday. Please announce me to Mr. Sullivan. I'm sorry, madam. Pedro is not at home. Pedro? Don't be so formal. Why not call him Snooky? A maid should keep her place. Oh, I intend to. It offers unusual opportunities for advancement to the right person. Goodbye, madam. I'll tell Snooky you called. Snooky? Mr. Sullivan! That will be all, June. This is delightful. I hope you'll forgive my barging in at this dreadful hour, but some friends are giving a dinner party tonight at the Hudson Club, and I thought you might like to join us. I would very much. Fine, you can pick me up at my house. Am I keeping you? No, I have to attend a meeting at the Flint Rubber Company. Well, my car's downstairs. Let me give you a lift. Well, thank you. I can show you some of the town on the way. I doubt if I'll see very much of the town. Gentlemen, Surely you appreciate that this proposed rubber loan is more than just a business deal. It's a move to cement... Um, it's a move to cement the relationship between two great democracies. Well, how do we stand? I'll take 15% of that loan. I'll take 10. What about it, Flint? You represent the country's biggest tire company. If our banking houses put up half the money, will you put up the rest? It's a swindle. The dirtiest swindle I ever heard of. We well, I, don't what you mean. Well, I don't understand what. what... You mean, this pistol was sold to me as a genuine Queen Anne dragoon. But no dragoon ever had a gooseneck hammer. Listen, Flint, we didn't come here to admire your collection of guns. Uh, may I? Yes. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. You're right. Hmm. Do you collect old weapons, too? Well, it's sort of a hobby of mine. Yeah? Yes. Of course, I'm not an authority like you. So far, I've specialized only in Latin American weapons. Well, say, 
Maybe you can help me get some pieces I've been after. Oh, Mr. Flint, I'll get you anything you want. But we'll we'll talk about that later. Right now, we better settle about this loan. You know, I've been trying to locate an Inca Ancus and a hand-carved wheat wheat. Inca Ancus? Mm. Carved wheat wheat? And I'd give my right arm for a big water. Yes? A big water what? What do you mean, what? A big water. Amazon blowgun. Why, you bluffing four-flusher. You're no more a collector than... Why, blowguns be blowed. All we want to know is, are you going to put up the money or not? No. But you, uh, you, you need our rubber. You, you can't stay in business without it. Can't I? <laughs> well, can you? Washington is very anxious for this loan to go through. Yes, they want, they want to develop every possible source of rubber. I'll buy all the rubber you can deliver now. Spot cash. Well, all our present stock has been sold to the Army. But we can reach full production within two years. We're ready to begin the moment we get the money. We'll purchase new equipment. Start well, developing... you're a dad-blasted numbskull if you think I'm going to finance new plantations for you. I can use that money to produce my own rubber in New Mexico. From Guayuli. Oh, but that's a waste of money. Guayuli rubber doesn't have the tensile strength and durability. It has the tensile strength of 0.683 with a durability ratio of 491 over 332. What's the ratio of natural rubber? Well, but this is more than a business deal. It, it's a move to cement the friendship of two oh, great... Oh, all this talk about neighbors and friends sounds pretty. But if you want to keep on good terms with your neighbors, don't lend them your lawnmower. But if the return is profitable, surely you Nobody ever returned a lawnmower. You have to get up on your hind legs and beg to borrow it back. Good day, gentlemen. A big wad of what? What do I want with his lawnmower? Circle six, six, seven hundred, please. Uh, hello, uh, this is Pedro Sullivan. May I speak to Senor Cordoba? He's talking long distance. May I call you back? Please, will you? I'm at home. Thank you. Did you tell June we were coming? I hope you did. No, I didn't. But it's her turn to hold the war bond committee meeting. Yes? Oh, a new man. Oh, Hiya, Jeeves. Tell the Duchess the mom is here. Well, I'm afraid you're making a mistake. Uh, if you're looking for Miss Delaney, she isn't here. Well, that's okay. We'll wait. <laughs> hello. Uh, hello, Sen Senor Cordoba. Th uh, this is Pedro. I just called to tell you I've run into a few complications. Speak up, man. Speak up. <coughs> How do you expect me to talk when you're blowing smoke in my face? Oh, oh I'm sorry, my boy. Yeah. Hey, will you please keep quiet? This is an important personal call. Are we interfering with his love life? Well, uh, naturally, I didn't expect to accomplish everything in the first meeting. Come to the point. What did the banker say? So far, all I've heard is no, 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 no. Sounds like the girl I was out with last night. <laughs> Just a moment. Oh, he's no, there he is. Would, would you... Never mind. Uh, ju just a moment. My face is a fright. Darling, get me my compact. It's on the foot of the bed. Pedro, are you sure you are attending to business? Now look, Virginia, it's the simplest thing in the world to make a splint. All you have to do is you cut a notch, but you see, right put that down. What are you doing? I can't, I'm, I'm sorry, senor. I've, I've run into a few complications. All right, you couldn't convince the bankers, but great heavens, man, use some initiative. I did. I talked to Murdoch Flint. The tire king? What did he say? I'll have to call my hairdresser and change my appointment. Well, he said Are you nearly through? Yes, 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 and will you stop pestering me? <laughs> that sounds like Flint, all right. Tough as a Texas steer, but a smart businessman. Why didn't you tell me this in the first place? Well, really? I'm sorry. I I'm so upset, I, I don't know what I'm saying. Well, I don't blame you for being excited. How soon can we have the money? 
Will you call me when you're finished? Immediately. Mm. Immediately. Splendid. Nice work, my boy. Nice work. I'm proud of you. Very proud. Now, Josh, take things easy for a while. Relax. Have a good time. You have earned it. Huh? I'll call you later. Goodbye. Send the cable to our home office. Purchase new equipment and proceed immediately with plans for development of plantations. We have arranged loan of two million through Murdoch Flint. That's all. Operate. Uh, never mind. Here's June. Oh, where have you been? Yeah. She's coming. I wasn't expecting. Well, don't you remember? It's your turn. Darling, what are you supposed to be? Oh, those Tyrolean peasant outfits have been done to death. I thought an American peasant dress was not only different, but uh, more patriotic. It, it's adorable. How clever of you to think of mm. it. Oh, it is cute. Oh, Look at those clothes, too. Sweet. Who's there? June. Come in. June, get those people out of here. How? I don't care how. Just get them out of here. And June. Yes? Now I know everything. You do? Now I know why you're, shall we say, different from other domestics. Oh. If that is a sample of Miss Delaney's friends, you've been working for a moron. Well, that's... I know the terrible strain you must have been under. Now, please, June, get rid of them before I call the police. Yes, sir. Come on, June, let's get this meeting underway. Meeting? Oh, the meeting. Oh, you've made a mistake. It's um, Helen Martin's turn to hold it. Darling, it can't be. But it is. I just talked to her on the phone, and she's waiting for oh, you. Oh, come on, let's go. Susan never can get anything straight. OK, want to go in my car? I'm freelancing today. I'll see you there. OK, hurry up. We'll see you at Helen. By the way, if you ever want to get rid of that butler, let me know first. <laughs> now, don't keep us waiting. See you later, June. June. Uh, June, will you lay out my white tie and tails? I want a time to come back and change for the dinner party. You're going out this evening, sir? Yes, I'm taking Miss Martin to dinner. Just put my things in the bed. I'm going to take a shower. What if I'd been a burglar, or Hitler, or something? From now on, I'll nail it shut. How long have you been here? I just came. I was at the hospital. Louise is having some more twins, you know. Isn't she amazing? How do you suppose she does it? No matches, dear. This chair belongs over there, darling. What a sweet little dress. Why don't you and Charles get married? It would be so nice if you had twins, too. I can just hear that little feet. Bit -bit 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 that reminds me, did I leave my raincoat here? No, no, this belongs over here. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, you have a guest. Oh, oh where? Where? Oh, uh, although those belong to my father, I was just getting ready to give them away. Oh, then, darling, you must give them to me. You know I'm collecting bundles for blue jackets. <laughs> oh, but I, I, I'm sure they wouldn't have any need for evening clothes. Oh, we can tear them so they won't know what they are. Materials are so scarce now. Oh, but I, I just can't let you have them. They haven't been cleaned yet. Oh, that's all right. We wash and deodorize everything before... Oh, how... Well, you have a lot of things. Oh, I can fill my whole quota right here. Oh, look at all these wonderful suits. It's really a windfall, isn't it? Oh, oh. oh dear, oh dear. Look at this. Oh, What was that? Look. 
Look, dear, why don't you let me send you these things? It'll save you the trouble. No, no, dear. My chauffeur's right downstairs. My, these things are as good as new. Won't some poor man be surprised? Don't worry about all those shoes. I'll pick them up at the Red Cross meeting here tomorrow night. Oh, I, I, <laughs> I meant to tell you, uh, we can't have the first aid meetings here anymore. Well, why not? Well, it's a little difficult to explain. Uh, I must have left the radio on. Oh. The goggle hour. <laughs> I'd swear there was a man in this house. Celeste, are you suggesting? Well, all I can say is if it were my house, there would be. <laughs> oh, dear, dear. I'm not going to let you leave here with those clothes. They're much too heavy for you. Oh, well, perhaps you're right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Put those in the car. I'll be right down. Thanks so much, darling, for your contribution. I don't know how I'd have filled my quota if you hadn't insisted upon giving me those things. Oh, gracious, I, I almost forgot why I came. Charles is going to be late. He wanted me to come by and pick you up. We're all going somewhere for dinner. Oh. oh, well, uh, I'm not dressed. Tell him to come by for me later. All right, darling. Goodbye. Thanks again, dear. Joan. Joan. Yes, uh, yes, sir. Where's my dress suit? Do you think you ought to go out tonight, sir? You look a little tired. A couple of days in bed. Where but... is my dress suit? Uh, it, it hasn't come back from the cleaners yet. But I saw it on the bed just a little while ago. You saw it on that bed? Yes, that bed. Oh, you do need a rest. June, I don't know what's behind this, but if my suit isn't here in exactly... Yes, sir, I'll find it. Sir. Of course, you've lost a little weight, but it, it's very becoming. Yes, it has a nice drape to it. Gives you an air of casual indifference. It's a small matter, June, but this doesn't happen to be my suit. Oh, but it is, sir. I carried it all the way from the cleaners myself. Through a hailstorm? No, but it was several blocks away, and I didn't want to take any chances on Moors. That's not bad at all. Needs a little something back here. What, a papoose? No, a tuck. It's trouble with these inexpensive suits. They stretch every time you bend over. I'll have you know I paid $400 for this suit. Uh, I mean my suit. It was made by the best tailors in London. Whimsy and whimsy. This thing here was made by... I, I can't go anywhere looking like this. 
just a minute. Well, answer the door. Never mind, I'll do it myself. Hello, darling. A crowd showed up at the house unexpectedly, and I was afraid we might get stuck if you came by to pick me. Oh. Uh, I was... Uh, I was a little overweight. Oh. Uh, dress clothes aren't absolutely necessary. Well, as long as everyone else is dressing, I'll get my coat. Let's go. We have missed seeing you lately, Mr. Lady. I've missed being here. I don't know you. Mrs. Rowland, this is Mr. Oh, how do you do? I'm so... Oh, you poor man, you've lost your arm. Did I tell you no. Martha lost her teeth last week? She missed them just as we came out of the cocktail bar. <laughs> guess who's here, everybody. Guess who's here. Who are you? <laughs> this is Mr. Sullivan. Mr. and Mrs. Lawson, Barbara Lawson. How do you do? Sullivan? Pedro Sullivan? Of course he's the man you said you were going to marry. <laughs> You're over there, Helen. You're here, Mr. Sullivan. I hope you like New York. Where are you staying? At the Park Terrace. Uh, Pedro, let's order. I'm simply ravenous. All right. You said the Park Terrace? Uh, doesn't Miss Delaney live there? Yes, I'm staying in Miss Delaney's apartment. Are you sure? Yes, I've been there a week now. It's much more convenient than going to a hotel. Well, of course, you're you're some sort of relative of hers. No, I'm not. It's purely a business arrangement. <coughs> Nita, Juanita. <laughs> oh, it's quite all right. Everyone sings in the bathtub. <laughs> June, you can't go on this way. There's only one solution. Why don't you marry me? Excuse me, woman, please. It's nice tonight, isn't it? Uh, the air is nice tonight, isn't it? I say the air is nice tonight, isn't it? I don't know. I can't breathe. I have a very bad cold. Well, haven't, haven't we met before? I don't think so. Well, I'm sure we met somewhere. Was it Rio or Buenos Aires? Or was it this afternoon in my bedroom? Ah, uh, I was at Poughkeepsie this afternoon. And you're being quite ridiculous. But surely you... Uh, oh, please, you're exhausting my patience. I'm so sorry. I know just the thing for your cold. Thank you. 
Thank you, sir. Waiter. Yes, sir. Did you see a girl come out here wearing a gown that's, uh, you know, a gown? Oh, you mean the young lady at your table? Where have you been? Where's your car? I don't know. My chauffeur had a social engagement this evening. Never mind. Tell Mrs. Rowland I'm taking her car. I'm terribly sorry, Helen. Something important has just come up. I have to get back to the apartment. Oh, you poor man. Well, we must all put business before pleasure. Or is it business? You take my car. I was planning to go home in a taxi anyway to save gas. Thank you, if you don't mind. Good night. Good night. I'm happy to meet all of you. Thank you. Did you find Mr. Lady, sir? Not yet. Delaney. you look where you're going. Why don't you hold out your hand? It was out. What am I supposed to do? Reach back and tap you on the shoulder? Will you help me? It's tough enough to keep them rolling these days without having people bump into you. Now that you found it, you can let yourself in. Now that I... Excuse my appearance, sir. I've been sleeping all evening. Were you going to ask me something, sir? Was I? 
Yes. Where are all my clothes? Why aren't they in the closet, sir? June, I was sure I saw you at the Hudson Club tonight. Me? Oh, no, sir. Mr. Laney always used to go there, but my gentleman friends can't afford to take me to a place like that. They always take me to Palmland. It's inexpensive, but very refined. Mm, that sounds interesting. Tell me all about it. What's it like? Oh, it's just like Fairyland. They have beautiful palm trees all around the dance floor. And there's a big fountain in the middle that changes colors. And there are balloons everywhere. It's very elegant. Mm, sounds almost too good to believe. I was supposed to go there tonight, but I fell asleep. What? Why, it's only 10 o'clock. Why don't you run along and have a good time? Oh, thank you, sir. Perhaps I will. Good. I'll go with you. Yes, sir. Huh? Oh, oh, no, sir, you, you wouldn't like it. After the beautiful picture you've painted, I just can't resist it. seem to miss something. The palm trees. Now, don't tell me they've cut down those beautiful palm trees. Termites. Oh, how awful. And that magnificent fountain, where's that? Uh, oh, there it is. Oh, really magnificent. And where are those beautiful balloons? Well, there's a rubber shortage, haven't you heard? Nobody's been smart enough to do anything about it. You know, I'd like to meet some of your friends. Where are they? You haven't said hello to anyone yet. Well, hello. I haven't seen you in ages. Where have you been? Chicago. Just got the job today. Thought you were somebody else. You look exactly like, um, Mac. You're out here somewhere. Hey, Mac! Uh, wait. Wait for Mac. Someone here to see you. Hello, Mac. Amazing resemblance. Amazing. Giant, right? Well, there's some friends of yours trying to get your attention. Come on, say hello to them. Hi. 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 How's about this dance, babe? You want to cut a rug? Can I borrow your frame for this struggle? Come on, boy, let us go. Go buy yourself some ducats, bud. Where, where do I get them? Right up there. Excuse me, I'm cutting in. You're not cutting in, you're cutting up. On your way, horse face. Oh, look. What is this, a sandwich? Joe, look, you don't have to dance with this. This, this what? Hats up in the bleachers. This guy don't like the Giants. Oh, no. Oh, no. Throw him out. Throw him out. Hits him. No, no, you, you, you misunderstand me. I, I have the greatest respect for your giants. Well, that's more like it. I, I didn't mean to offend you. 
I came to this country especially to see the Giants play. Sure, apologies accepted. We have baseball teams in South America, but I always say nobody plays baseball like you Yankees. <laughs> sorry about tonight. I've caused you nothing but trouble since you've been here. I wouldn't say that. You sure you weren't hurt in the fight? No. Somebody picked my pocket. They even took the pocket. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Shh. really. I... Let me see that eye. Stick out your tongue. Moon. In March? Spring here is autumn in South America. The harvest festivals are beginning now. Every night the workers make a big fire and sit around laughing and singing songs about love. Breeze carries a fragrance of jungle flowers. And one by one, the couples disappear into the darkness. We practically never get the crops in. I wish we were there tonight. What? I didn't say anything. No. I had the most wonderful dream last night. <clears throat> the name is Sullivan, madame. Well, then it wasn't a dream. Thank you, Mac. The morning paper... Caracolis. What is it? It was announced in Washington last night that the Venezuelan Rubber Company has negotiated a $2 million loan from New York financiers for the development of new plantations. The loan has gone through it. It's gone through. Uh, I gotta go see Cordoba right away. I ought to fire any man who would drop a delicate suit of armor like this. 
Telephone, Mr. Flynn. Oh, still, Dad. Blast you. You've got it out of line again. Now, brace it from the inside. You know, if I ruin this, I can't get another. Neither can I. Oh. Now I'll see what you've done. What do you want? Huh? Cordoba. Cordoba? Cord... Oh! Is he the man who promised me the hand carved wheat wheats? Put him on. Just a moment, please. Hello, Mr. Flynn. I'm sorry to bother you, but I have a wire here from Washington. They would like a copy of the loan agreement. What loan? What agreement? Where are my hand carved wheat wheats? Wheat wheats? I'm referring to the loan Mr. Sullivan negotiated with you yesterday for our rubber plantations. <laughs> Sullivan, if he sticks his nose in here again, I'll throw him out. I wouldn't buy any rubber from that dead blasted numbskull if I... I hope I misunderstood you. Would you mind to say that again? You bet I will. Your imagination stretches farther than your rubber if you think I'm going to put up any money for plantations that aren't producing right now. But I... No buts about it. I'm not waiting for anybody to develop new plantations. I'm developing my own source of supply. I don't see how there could be any mistake. Sullivan distinctly told me I... Hello. Hello? Congratulations, senor. I just read about the loan. I don't expect all the credit, but after all, I did lay the groundwork. Eh, Simon? Wait outside. Now listen to me, you brainless, incompetent idiot. Why did you tell me you closed that deal? What deal? What deal? What deal? You blundering jackass. You told me about that phone. Flint have put up the money. I did? Oh, I should have handled this myself in the first place. Oh, now, don't worry, senor. I'll go back you and... You are going everything. right back to Venezuela. Oh, but, senor, I... Reserve I... a ticket for Mr. Sullivan on the next boat. But I, I know I can... I'll I... handle Mr. Flynn. And if I have any interference from you, you'll work your way back on the boat. still refused to give us the loan. But the paper said... I don't understand it. Every time I turn around, something goes wrong. I've been in hot water ever since I've been here. I'll be leaving Saturday. Well, there must be some way to win Flint over. You know, it seems as though someone were deliberately trying to wreck this deal. I, I just don't understand it. Is there something I can do to help? No. You're the only thing on this entire trip that's been perfect. <laughs> Aunt. June, uh, do you know what I did with those papers a minute? Yes, they're on the dresser. Thank you. Oh, so you still have your dust cap in the ring. You're wasting your time, pet. I'll have him making love to me by tonight. Oh, I'm sure you'll enjoy it, dear. He does it divinely. <laughs> June, those papers aren't on the dresser. Oh, perhaps you left them in my room. No, I saw them in here after I served you breakfast in bed. I'll see if I can find them. I... I didn't know you were here. Obviously. Pedro, I think there are a few things you ought to know about your mate. You mean that she's Miss Delaney? I found that out last night. Why did she take this job? I wouldn't say a word against her, understand, but everyone knows she's trying to sell a Guayuli ranch in New Mexico. Guayuli ranch? What's that got to do with me? She's trying to sell it to the rubber companies. I still don't see... It's perfectly obvious she... No. 
No, I shouldn't tell you this. Tell me what? No, please. You can't ask me to betray a confidence. Helen, tell me. Well, naturally she wants to prevent the competitors from getting the deal. She knew there was a good chance of you succeeding, so she had to stop you somehow. I don't believe that. She couldn't... But it all fits. It fits perfectly. That's why she answered my ad for an apartment. She's been at the bottom of everything. And not three minutes ago, she was all sympathy, telling me how much she wanted to help me. My papers. She's stolen my confidential papers. They were in the dresser drawer all the time. I don't see how you can sell rubber for eight cents a pound when you can't buy a good girdle for less than ten dollars. And what does this mean? Guaranteed durability ratio. Helen, will you give me a lift? I have to tell Senor Cordova about this immediately. And you better let me find you another apartment. I'm moving to a hotel today. Will you be home for dinner? No. The way things look now, I'll never eat again. I've done it. Look, I got most of your money out of England. Of course, I use the full weight of my influence with uh, Winnie. Yes, I read where that eased up on all private holdings. Oh. Charles, do you know Murdoch Flint? Know him? Oh, oh, I should say I do. We used to spend days together in court. I was suing him. He shot my client with a blunderbuss. That's his hobby. I mean, he collects old weapons. Of course, he claimed it was an accident. He collects old weapons? Yes. That's why he married his present wife. Mr. Flint, I want to thank you for your company's cooperation with the Priorities Board and the rationing of tires. That's all right. I was just doing my duty. That's all. Just my duty. I hate to mention it, but there's a slight error in these figures. Four of the tires are unaccounted for. Oh, those. <laughs> yes, well, you, you see, my own tires were getting kind of thin, and I thought that... Uh... Do you have a priority certificate? Well, no. No, I haven't. As I say, my tires were getting kind I'm of sorry, thin. I'm sorry, Mr. Flint. But unless you can prove they're an absolute necessity. Necessity? I tell you, they're getting thin. I'm running almost on the rims now. I mean, if you were delivering milk or collecting garbage. In my limousine? On three gallons a week? Dog blast it, man. Can't a man have a set of his own tires? Not unless you file an appeal. You're darn tootin' I'll file an appeal, you thick-headed numbskull. Who do I appeal to? Me. Good day, Mr. Flint. Hello? Delivering milk, collecting garbage. <laughs> Just a minute, please. Do you know a Mr. Laney? No. She wants to talk to you about a... No! A blunderbuss. Shall I tell her you're out? No! Mr. Laney? Yes? I'm Murdoch Flint. How oh, would you come in, Mr. Flint? Thank you. Brass barrel bell muzzled blunderbuss. Oh, with a flash pan. Oh, what a perfect specimen. Isn't she a beauty? All she needs is a little powder in a pan. Where did you get it? Oh, she's been with us quite some time. Really? You don't look to me the sort of woman who'd have arms around her. I mean, of the dangerous kind. Is there any other kind? I wanted an expert's opinion, Mr. Flint. Is this gun rare? Rare? <laughs> Well, I've only seen one other like her, and that was at the sale of the Goldberg collection. I'd have had her, too, but I was outbid. Some loud-mouthed, blundering ignoramus... Well, that's where my father got it. <clears throat> ignoramus of an auctioneer said he didn't hear my bid. Do you think I ought to give it to a museum? Well, personally, I think this should be in a private collection. Now, my collection is considered... Perhaps I should give it to the Metropolitan. What? And have a work of art like that buried under a lot of old Rembrandts? Now, as I say, my collection is considered... Maybe uh, I should keep it in the family, though. My father was very fond of her. You see, he's, well, 
I'm alone now. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there anything I can do? You know, I want you to look upon me as, well, as a member of the family. Oh, may I, Mr. Flint? Mr. Laney, I've taken a great personal interest in you. Would you like to have dinner with me tonight? Thank you, I'd love to. But don't you see, senor, it wasn't my fault. Miss Delaney is working against us. She wants to sell Flint her Guayuli ranch. We haven't the chance. She has all our confidential figures. Besides, old men are fools when it comes to a pretty woman. Yeah, she probably wound him around her finger. Used all her charms on him, made love to him. I know how she works. After dinner, I thought you might like to come up to my apartment and see my bell-nosed Italian tag. Oh. Forget something? Oh, well, yes, I, I must have left my compact on the coffee well, Let me table. get it for you. It won't take me a minute. Pardon? I tell you, it's too late, senor. It isn't too late. June still doesn't know that I know who she is. I'll use her own technique on her. I'll make love to her. I'll get her to use her irresistible charm on Flint to put over our deal. You forget. You are leaving Saturday. Oh, we... Everything will be settled by then. However, senor, I only have about five dollars in my pocket and I can't get very romantic How do you expect to get two million dollars from Flint when you can't even get a nickel from me? Good night. Dead blasted. Flint? Get off of me, you oh, dad blasted in I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I thought you were a crook. I mean, I, I saw a man in my apartment and I... Your uh, apartment? Well, yes. All right, all right. You're a great watchdog. Now go back to sleep. Name Sullivan. Sullivan? Sullivan? You'd better get acquainted. He's living in your apartment. And when you see him, tell him I made my money without the help of any woman and I can hang on to it the same way. Yeah. I don't care where he is. If he thinks Flint's a headache, wait till he starts making love to me. Managed to get back after all. Mmm, that's a beautiful coat you're wearing. One of Mr. Laney's? Don't you worry, darling. You'll have a dozen ermine coats all your own just as soon as I can win Flint over. Isn't it romantic up here? Just look out over the city. The soft glow of the dim out. Don't you feel something drawing you out there into the night? Something strong and irresistible? Mm. Victor Mature at the Rialto. I was speaking of love. For the first time, the garish lights are out. And they all can see the stars. No, no, they're not stars, darling. Those are night flowers burst into bloom just for you. Mm, breathe their perfume deep into your lungs. In your imagination, 
Ah, oh, darling. Let the mood of the moment steal over you. Feel the magic in the night. It's like standing on the prow of a ship. And the gentle breeze is kissing your lips. And the smell of fish from the ocean. The smell of fish? I can't help it. I do love you. Wait a minute. I'm supposed to make love to you. Supposed to? Well, a man is always expected to do the lovemaking, isn't he? In order to put over his business deals? Yes, I heard everything downstairs. I didn't think anybody could stoop so low, could be so cheap and contemptible. Is that worse than posing as a maid, so you... I only did it as a favor to you. I wish I could return the favor. You can. See that you're out of my apartment in ten minutes. I'll be out in nine. Try a hotel. Perhaps if you're charming enough, you can get the chambermaids to help you with that loan. have the first aid meetings here anymore. For you, isn't it wonderful? I finally persuaded Mr. Mooney to let us have broken legs tonight. Come here. Why did you bring them here? I told you they couldn't meet at this apartment anymore. Oh, I'm sure Mr. Sullivan won't mind. He's such a charming gentleman and so good looking. Just breaks my heart to think he's lost his arm. Or is it his leg? What do you know about Mr. Sullivan? Not as stupid as I act. Besides, Helen's been gloating all day about how cleverly she got him away from you. Angel, you don't think for one moment. She told him something about you being a competitor in the rubber business. Oh, did I tell you? Ruthie's hoarding girdles. Well, as long as there's a girdle shortage, I think it's very considerate of Mr. Roosevelt to cut out on sugar. When I get through with you, this first aid class is going to get some real experience. I won't stand here another minute and ouch! Be careful, we mustn't disturb Mr. Sullivan. <laughs> Pedro, wait, please, I want... Your keys? Here they are, Mr. Laney. I'll send for the rest of my things later. Good night, Mr. Laney, and goodbye. No, no, Mrs. Rowland. We don't stop a nosebleed by using a tourniquet around the neck. Now, ladies, your attention, please. I will demonstrate the pack strap carry. Mrs. Williams, you follow me. You need brushing up on your carries. My, isn't it wonderful how Helen gets into the spirit of the thing? I enjoy working on her so much. I've been incredibly stupid. I should have known Helen was at the bottom of everything. Come, come. 
Come, girls, this is no time to gossip. I'll conduct the class until Mr. Mooney returns. Now, girls, suppose your patient has a compound fracture of the right leg. First you take the leg and gently... Celeste, how am I going to straighten things out? I love him terribly, but how can I explain? Well, why don't you invite him to my charity auction tomorrow night? Then we can explain things to him and sell things to him at the same time. Sold to Mrs. Vincent for twenty-two fifty. This rare Dutch silver decanter. Thank you, Mrs. Vincent. The next item is this. Uh, is this beautiful? <laughs> well, is this donated by Mrs. Rowland? I've been trying to get rid of that for years. What am I offered? Three dollars. Four dollars. Four fifty. Oh, come on, everybody. We all have to make sacrifices for our country. Every penny taken in here is for a great cause. Twelve. Am I offered more? Twelve dollars going once, going twice? Fifteen. Twenty. Twenty-five. Thirty-five. Forty. Fifty. Sold to Mrs. Rowland for fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Why did you tell me to meet you here? I received this telegram. It says we can see Flint here tonight about the loan. Why, it isn't even signed. I know, senor, but it's a chance. And we can't afford to. And now I'm going to put up a rare and priceless antique. A genuine flint tire. The last of its kind. <laughs> However, the Flint Rubber Company is rushing a Guayuli substitute that will be on the market in seven or eight years. Can you beat that in seven or eight years? Of course, South American rubber could be available in two years. But Mr. Flint is very far-sighted, and he says we'll have all the Guayuli tires we want in seven or eight years. My boy, I apologize. I didn't think you could win her over so soon. What am I offered? Twenty dollars. Twenty-five. Thirty-five. Fifty dollars. Seventy-five. One hundred. One hundred and fifty. One hundred and seventy-five. One eighty. Do I hear two hundred? Surely it's worth more than one hundred and eighty dollars to somebody. Two hundred. Two hundred once, two hundred twice, third and last time. Going, going, gone. Sold to Murdoch Flint. <laughs> oh, so you're Flint. Why don't you just go out and swipe them off our cards? The next item is a brown vest, brass barrel, bell muzzle blunderbuss. What am I offered? A dollar and a half. A dollar and a half? Why, oh, you ignorant numbskull. That gun's the finest specimen of its kind. It's worth a fortune. Two dollars. Dollar and a half. Do I hear two dollars? Yes, two dollars. Come, come. It would be a shame to let this rare collector's piece go for only a dollar and a half. Two dollars. Two dollars. What's the matter with you, woman? Are you deaf? I'm sorry, Mr. Flint. The people are complaining so loudly about the tire shortage, I can't hear a word you say. Did you say you'd given that loan to Mr. Sullivan? Hmm? No, I did not. I said two dollars. Two fifty. Three dollars. Sold to Pedro Sullivan for two fifty. Uh, oh, now, see here, Sullivan. I want that gun. I've got to have it. Uh, I'll trade you my tire. No, oh, that's pretty smooth. Will you throw in two million dollars? Uh, no, no. Wait a minute, wait a minute. No, that gun doesn't mean anything to you. You're not collecting them. I think I'll start. I need a hobby. Something to take my mind off business. Hasn't been very good lately, anyhow. I don't know, though. That might make a very nice ashtray. Ashtray? <laughs> <laughs> oh, now be reasonable. All right. I give in. You can have your loan. Mr. I... Flint, you are a man of great vision. It's easy to see why you lead your industry. Mr. Flint, will you be kind enough to accept this as a token of my appreciation? Uh, come on now, smile. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Here, here. Can I help you? What did you take the tire, Flint? <laughs> yeah. June. Darling, even after Helen told me you were working against me, I couldn't stop loving you. Well, how can I believe anything you say after what happened? Will you believe this? Excuse me. Oh. Oh, uh, may I help you? No, you don't know what you can do to help me today. 
Uh, let me carry the gun, no, Mr. No, Flint. No, no, no. Uh, this is my car right here. Well, I'll help no, you in the car with it. Oh. Oh. Ah! My tire! That's as far as we go. Thank <laughs> you.